What's up, YouTube? I just got back from China and I brought a whole bunch of goodies to show you guys. This is the Yo Gao ZX7250 Inverter Stick Arc Welder. Now, this guy is cheap, 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 cheap. This was 15 US dollars delivered to my door in China through Taobao. That's kind of like the Amazon of China. So, it's a little suspicious. You know, why is it so cheap? We're going to check it out later. We're going to check inside. We're going to be doing uh, some tests of it, and we're going to be checking the current ratings, see if they match up with what the supplier is saying. Now at $15, this is a standalone unit, which means it's going to come with the unit itself and the power cord. But you're going to have to supply the power plug yourself. This uh, is a Chinese plug here, but you can get any plug for your specific country's requirements. It also doesn't come with a stinger or a ground clamp or welding cable. So you're gonna have to source those yourself, but it does come with the plug so you can connect welding cables to the unit. Taking a look at some of the features here, we've got a display here for amperage. We've got an adjustment for amperage here, and we've got an arc force adjustment which is a pretty rare feature on cheap welders like this. If you look, most of the cheap ones only have a current adjustment. Sometimes they don't even have a display. So this is a 220 volt unit here. Let's open it up. It hasn't been powered on. Let's open it up and see what's going on inside. I've removed some of the screws already to speed up the process. All right, let's see what we got going on in here. So right off the bat, big safety issue here is it's a two wire power cord, which means it doesn't have a third wire for a ground. So looking at the back, all these exposed contacts are such close proximity to this case that if they're way to cause a short and you touch the case, you could get electrocuted. So we're going to have to convert this to a three wire cord. I'm gonna show you how to do that later. Uh, from a electronics perspective, I can't give too much of an in-depth review, but I'll go over some of the basics here. So we've got the AC input here, and it goes to a bridge rectifier, which converts it to DC. You can kind of see that down there. It's got a heat sink here. And then that is converted by the transistor here and there, I believe, to high frequency AC. And that AC can drive this transformer here. And because it's high frequency, the size of the transformer can be very small. That's the difference between traditional welders and IGBT welders is traditional welders need to have a very big transformer because the power going through them isn't high frequency. So they can use a smaller transformer here, and then the transformer converts the input of 220 volts down to roughly 20 volts or so, or 25 volts, so you can do your welding. And then that secondary of the transformer is connected to this heatsink here, which has the uh, diodes, and these diodes are gonna convert it back to DC for the output. It looks like we've got some kind of temperature sensor here too so it might have some sort of temperature protection protection connected to the brains here and yeah overall it looks pretty clean i mean kind of a cheap construction but it looks like it might get the job done Now that we've got the welder all set up, let's test out its true maximum current. Remember the manufacturer said it could produce up to 250 amps. I've got a DC clamp meter over there measuring current. We can see that the maximum current produced by the welder is 108 amps. This is less than half of what the manufacturer claims this unit can do. To do my welds, I'm going to be using this $4 auto darkening welding helmet. It came from Taobao as well.
this time appears to be a success. The two pieces have been fused together without any burning through. Let's stress test it. The metal bends, but the weld doesn't fail. So what's my verdict? I think this welder is really suitable for hobbyists and people looking to get into welding, but don't want to make too much of an initial investment, just like myself. It does come with its quirks though, one being that power cord, which I highly recommend switching for a grounded cord, and also the amperage is less than half than the manufacturer stated, so don't think you're going to be doing any structural welds with this. Although on thinner steel, it does seem to do a pretty good job, like this piece here. Links in the description for this welder and welding helmet on Taobao. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you have any tips or tricks on welding, be sure to send them to me, because I have no idea what I'm doing. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. You can check out some of my other videos here.